Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. This is a full step-by-step -step guide on the McDonald's practice example that we did at KC 2023 for 3.15 systems of equations. And I've got on the right, um, I've got the full question for us to look at. We're going to start off by smashing up the achieved part of it. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, how many grams of fat are in each type of McDonald's burger? We need to answer that for achieved. We don't need to be fancy with our algebra. We just need to do the bare, um, the, the, we'll call it the bare bones, risk-free to make sure we guarantee our marks. So the first thing we need to do for the achieved portion is we need to define our variables. So we need to say what each of our letters will represent in this particular scenario. So in this case here, you may do different letters. So you may do X, Y, Z, um, suggested by the names. You may do B, C, F by the food. Um, up to you, I've gone B, C, F. So what that means is my definitions is we're going to let B equal to the grams of fat. And that's really, really important because we've been asked to find the grams of fat. The most common issue I'll probably see here is people say B equals the number of Big Macs. But we have been asked for the number of Big Macs and we actually have all the details of that. So there's no point solving for something you already know. So the grams of fat in a Big Mac. That's what the B stands for. We're now going to move on to C. And again, I'm just bullet pointing it. I'm not very good with sentences. So I'm not going to bother. So C is equal to the grams of fat in a cheeseburger. And then again, I'm going to use these little um, dash dash things, which means kind of copied from below. So that means grams of fat, just because I'm feeling a bit lazy. And then finally, the last one, F for French fries, grams of fat will go in a medium, oh, I spelled that wrong, um, medium French fries. So that's step number one. I've defined my variables. Step number two, I need to form some equations. Uh, form equations, and ultimately this is why we're doing it. We form equations so we can solve it, which hopefully means we can answer the questions. So let's look at Xander first. So let's form an equation in relation to Xander. So we can see the information on the table here, and you can see that that other information being replicated up the top. So same, same. Let's look at the table. Um, so two X, or so two Big Macs in algebra is gonna be two B, because we said the grams of fat in a Big Mac was B. So two times B will be the grams of fat Xander has eaten from the Big Macs. The fat from the cheeseburgers will be plus two C because we define C as the fat from all the cheeseburgers. And then finally had one French fry. So we're gonna go plus F, which relates to the fat and the French fries. So that comes to 94. We're now gonna do the same for Yusuf. Um, three B being the Big Macs plus 2C being the cheeseburgers, plus 3F being the french fries. That gets me to 156. And then finally, Zach's one. Zach was pretty hungry that day. Um, so Zach had five Big Macs, plus four cheeseburgers, plus two french fries. And that came to 214. So hopefully you can see how these all came about. Once you've formed your equations, the third step is you are looking to solve those equations. And this is where your graphics calculator or other online solving tool will come into play. I won't bore you by entering all the data, but if I entered these equations in my solving tool, I use my graphics calculator, I was told that B is equal to 26, C was equal to 12, and F was equal to 18. So I've now solved it. And my final step, um, step number four, just to sure up your achieve, explain what do those actually mean? And I'm going to use some bullet points again because I'm feeling a bit lazy. Bullet point number one, let's talk about B equals 26. That tells me about the grams of fat in a Big Mac. So there are 26 grams of fat 
in a Big Mac. So let's write that down. There are 26 grams of fat in a Big Mac. There we go, we've done that. Let's discuss C equals 12. That relates to the grams of fat in the cheeseburger. So we've got 12 grams of fat. Again, I'm going to bullet point. There are 12 grams of fat in a cheeseburger. And the very final one, F equals 18, that relates to the grams of fat in the french fries. So wrapping up our achieved answer, there are 18 grams of fat, because F was equal to 18, of fat in a medium French fries. Um, really important, make sure you put the medium in there just to clarify, because there could have been small or large or whatever. So that wraps up the achieved question. If you are able to replicate these four steps in your internal, that's a good way to shore up and lock in your overall achieved response. So I think pretty straightforward. If you look at the time of this video, about six minutes 30, we we're able to explain bits of the question and smash out the achieved answer. So we are now moving on to the second bullet point, and this is when we creep into the merit and excellence part of this question. And just reading through it, Yusuf was a little bit confused. He's not actually sure how many French fries he ate. Assuming that he can eat in half packets, so that's half packet parts, actually really important. Investigate the number of French fries that he could eat in order to have the most fat. So this section here starts with merit, and I'm just going to call this section Yusuf most fat question mark. And then just a reminder from the previous part, we were we were told that B was equal to 26, C was equal to 12, and F was equal to 18. So I guess to start off with, we need to figure out what is the most fat for this con context. And currently we can see Zach had 214 grams of fat. So for Yusuf to have the most fat, he must have more than 214 grams of fat. So he must have more than 214 grams of fat. So in this case, let's be nice and simple. Let's call it 215 grams because that or anything more will give us a larger amount of fat for Yusuf. So the next thing we need to think of, well, Yusuf, the French fry number that I've circled three French fries currently, that's going to change. We're not sure what number that actually is. But we do know the two above it, the Big Macs and the cheeseburgers, are correct. So currently he has had, in terms of fat, 3 times 26, which don't forget was the fat in the Big Mac. Um, that came to, um, sorry, just doing this in my head, 78 grams. And then he had 2 times 12, which is 24 grams. And from that, He's already got 102 grams. So that means the difference between these two here, to 102 to get to 215, that all has to come from the chips. And that difference is 113 grams of fat. So we need to figure out how many chips Yusuf needs to eat to get this 213 grams of fat. So I'm going to go... 113 divided by the 18, which relates to the grams of fat we calculated as the grams of fat per one pack of chips. So this is going to be a decimal number. So we're going to have 113 divided by 18, and this gets me to 6.27 recurring. So this is when it gets a bit tricky, and if, I think a few people are going to get issues with this. And it relates exactly to the half packs comment. So we can't have 0.27 of a pack of chips. He can have a whole chips or a part chips. So what that means is we need to think, well, would it be 6 chips or would it be 6.5 chips? 6 chips would be a smaller amount of fat, which would probably go less than the amount we need. So we're going to cross that off, which means 
Yusuf needs the 6.5 grams of fat. We're probably going to have too much fat, which will put us above the 215 gram target. But that's okay, because that means he would have had the most amount of fat. And that was kind of what he was speculating in that part of the question. So based on that, we're going to say, therefore, Yusuf will need to eat 6.5 grams of fat. Oh, sorry, not of fat. 6.5 um, medium French fries. Gosh, I nearly got that wrong. That was a bit of a nightmare. Medium French fries to ensure he has the most fat. So I'm not sure if that's something to brag about, to be honest, but if he does, that would be the case. So this here is one half of what you need for merit. So this here gets you the merit mark, but only related to the contextual element. So for merit, you've got to apply something to context, and that's what we've done here. The second half of it is going to be on the next slide, and that's all about proving 0 equals 0, and that relates to the third and final bullet point. So we are now on to the last bullet point. As I said just before, this is the second half of merit. It also gets onto the excellence. Um, so Yusuf remembered, so we're only talking about Yusuf here, he remembered he actually only ate one medium french fries, which means he ate 120 grams of fat. Yusuf is all over the show, but let's change his graph for that. So we're going to cross out this 3, put in 1, cross out the 156, and put in 120. So what that means is Yusuf's equation will actually be quite different now, and that's going to change the answers that we calculated in that achieved section. Um, we've been asked to investigate the amount of fat in each of the different types of food. So what this means basically is, can we get an answer now? So can we find or re-find out what x, y, and z equals to? Or is there maybe many infinite solutions? Or maybe there's no solutions at all? So what we're going to do is just to help us with that, um, solving this algebraically will highlight which of the scenarios it will be, but the graphics calculator won't. This is why we need to do it algebraically. So our first step, let's rewrite our new equations. And Xander, I'll just put X over here, he has, he's not changed, so that there is going to be um, 2B plus 2C plus F equals 94. I'm actually going to put Yusuf up top um, because his equations change quite a bit. He's got 3B plus 2C plus F and that came to 120. And then finally Zach, we'll put Zach down the bottom. He's unchanged as well. He's got 5B plus 4C plus 2f, and that there equals 214. So let's label all our equations, because we're going to start solving these, equation 1, equation 2, and equation number 3. So what I like um, from this equation here is I can kind of see from the first two equations there's a lot of similarity, so I'll be able to eliminate the c and the f pretty easily if I wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit of a pest, I'm going to be a bit annoying. I'm going to leave the C's and the F's, and I'm going to focus on eliminating the B's in this case. So it's a bit interesting. I'm picking the hardest variable to eliminate just to make sure I comprehensively conclude this example. We may get to 0 equals 0 by accident, um, because things may cancel out if we get an answer too early on. So what we're going to do, 3B and 2B, I can get those both to 6B. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by 2, and I'm going to multiply the second equation by 3. So when I do that, I'm going to get 6b plus 4c plus 2f, and that comes to 240. So we're going to call that equation number 4. Just a reminder, that is equation number 1 times 2. I'm then going to do the timesing by 3 of equation number 2, and that there is 6b plus um, just looking next to me, we've got 6c plus 2, 3f, 
and that will be equal to 282, and that there is equation number 5. And just a reminder, that was equation number 2 multiplied by 3. And as suggested, I'm going to look to cancel out the Bs, and I can do that by doing equation number 4 minus equation number 5. So the Bs cancel each other out. The Cs will be negative 2C. The Fs will be negative F. And the constants at the end will be negative 42. All three parts of this equation are negative, so let's make a positive. So we've got 2C plus F equals 42. So I'm going to call that equation equation number 6. So I'm now thinking about what other variables I can eliminate. So normally I would eliminate variable 1, equation 1 with equation 3. But this time around I'm going to mix it up. I can, don't forget, eliminate equations 2 and 3. And I like that because the b's which I'm currently dealing with, I can make those both 10b. So if I times equation number 2 by 5 and equation number 3 by 2, both of those will become 10b. So let's get into that multiplication. So that's going to be 10b. Don't forget I'm timesing um, equation number 2 by 5 plus 10c plus 5f. That there is equal to 470. I'm going to call that equation number 7 at this stage. I'm then got multiplying the bottom equation by 2. So 10b, and again, I like that. I can cancel those b's out shortly. Uh, plus 8c plus 4f, and that equals to 428. And that there is equation number 8. So I'm now going to cancel out the b's by subtracting. So that was number 7 minus number 8. Um, the b's are gone. The c's going to become 2c. The f's are going to cancel each other out as well. That's going to be 1f. And down here, we've got 42. So that there, we're going to call equation number 9. And I can kind of see what's happening here. So remember I said I didn't actually know what's what was going to happen. Was there going to be one solution, many or infinite solutions, or no solutions? I've now got a bit of an idea because we can see these two equations, 6 and 9, are the exact same. So when I subtract them or try to solve here, these are going to cancel each other out by mistake. So let's do equation number 6 minus equation number 9. So 2c minus c is 0 f minus f also 0 and 42 minus 42 again 0. So what we've done here is we've proved that 0 equals 0. So let's think about what this means for use of in this particular scenario. So what this means is there are no unique solutions. We have a line or the um, we, the three planes, so they represent the three equations, intersect as a line, which means we have many or infinite answers. So that's mathematically what it means. Forgive me as I write answers again, that was a bit sloppy. So mathematically, that's what it means. What does it mean for these gentlemen here who have been eating lots of McDonald's? So what that means is we it's going to be difficult. We don't actually know with certainty what the Big Mac, the cheeseburgers, and the French fries were. So it means it's going to be difficult for these three gentlemen to figure out how many grams of fat are in each of those three foods. So therefore... It will be difficult for, and I'm being lazy here, don't be lazy in your exam, X for Xander, Y for Yusuf, and Z for Zach to figure out the grams of fat in each item. So that's not ideal for them. So we've shown it is 0 equals 0. So this here was the second thing we needed to do to shore up on our merit. 
And I just want to note, whilst we said it was going to be difficult for them to figure out each of the grams of fat, it's not going to be impossible. We can, because there are many solutions, we can generalize for the three solutions. And then we can give some examples or an example of what the solution may end up looking like. So we are now looking to convert our three equations, which was from the merit section, into generalizations. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by letting f equal to k. So if we do that, we can rearrange all these f's need to go away. And we need to put k there instead. So equation number one will be 3b plus 2c plus k equals 120. Equation number two will become 2b plus 2c plus k equals 94. And then finally, 5b plus 4c plus 2k is equal to 214. And our equations, I'm just going to be lazy and call them 1, 2, 3 again. So now that I've got k here, I'm now looking to solve for b equals, which means I need to do something about eliminating the c's. And then I need to find something to do with c equals, which means I'm eliminating the b's. So let's start off with by eliminating the c's, because I can see I've got 2c and 2c in equation number 1. I can just subtract them and that will make it go away. So equation number one, and I'll get rid of that, not those equations, minus equation number two. So we've got 3b minus 2b, which is 1b, uh, might not be equals. We've got 2c minus 2c is zero, so that goes away. k minus k, zero, that goes away. So that's gonna be equal to 120 minus 94. And in that case, this is 26. So this one's actually a really nice answer. We've eliminated the K by, well, not necessarily a mistake, but that's just kind of how the maths works in this case. So I've now got B, which means I need something to do with C. So I've got to think, well, what's the easiest way to eliminate all of the Bs? And like I did for the first question, I'm going to deal with 6B. So I'm going to try to go times 2 and times 3, and that will create some new equations. So let's do that. So first equation times 2 is going to be 6b plus 4c plus 2k equals 240. I'm going to call that equation number 4. And then second equation times 3, that's going to be 6b plus uh, 6c plus 3k equals uh, 94 times 3. Gosh, I wish I did this part pre before so let's get my calculator 94 times 3 that's 282 and that there is equation number 5 so I'm liking this so far now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these equations to eliminate the b's so we're going to have equation number 4 minus equation number 5 and as I said the b's cancel each other out the c's are negative 2c the k's are negative k and the numbers come to negative 42. All of them are negative. You'll see this resembles a little bit like we did in the previous question. So that's going to be 2c plus k equals 42. Now, as I said, I know that f is equal to something. I know that b is equal to something. So my job here is I'm looking to get c equals something. So I need to rearrange this equation. I can do that by going minus k minus k. So that means 2c is equal to 42 minus k. I then need to go divide by 2, divide by 2. So c is equal to 42 minus k divided by 2. And that there, while it's not an exact answer, it is a generalization. It is an expression which I can use to calculate um, c. So what I've got here is I've got f is equal to k, b is equal to 26, and c is equal to 42 minus k over 2. So what that tells us, no matter what happens, because um, Yusuf had a bit of a nightmare, no matter what happened is we, we know the Big Mac's going to be 26 um, grams of fat. But the other two, the French fries and the cheeseburger, there's a few different combinations that could have been. So we're going to go and think about what they may be. So let's do a little of a summary. So therefore, 
our generalizations are, so we know that bullet point number one, if will be equal to k, we know that c will be equal to 42 minus k over 2, and b will be equal to 26. So no matter what happens, it will be 26 grams of fat. So what I'm going to do, now that we've got these, I'm going to pause the video. I'm quickly going to delete the green stuff we just worked on. So if you want to look at that in a bit more detail, pause or go back and have another look. So just going to describe what this generalization actually means in a bit more detail. So our generalizations, our generalizations, or forgive me as I spell generalizations wrong. tell us that the Big Macs definitely, um, forgive me as I'm definitely spelling that wrong, have 26 grams of fat. However, the grams of fat in the cheeseburger and medium French fries so medium French fries um, have many different solutions have many different solutions. So that's what our generalization means. Um, so let's now think of the kind of the, the issues that we have with our rules. So we know from f equals k, we can't have negative calories or negative grams of fat, sorry, in our burger. So what this bit here means is that means our k value must always be greater than zero. And c, c also has its own issues because if we simplify that a bit more, that's going to be 21 minus k over 2. Um, k over 2. So what that means is because we're subtracting stuff away, we may end up being negative. So we need to figure out, well, K can't be any number. K has to be a number where the overall expression stays positive. And in this case here, if K was 42, that would be 21 minus 21, which is equal to zero. And that can't be, case, can't be the case because definitely a cheeseburger doesn't have zero grams of fat. If not, I'll be eating them way more. So what that means is K must be less than 42. So we've got a bit of a range. So our values for k that are relevant, it has to be greater than 0, and it has to be less than 42. So for our generalizations, we, forgive my bad writing, we know that the food must not be zero or negative grams of fat. And which means K must be greater than zero. and less than 42. So that wraps up that part. The very final thing we need to do, let's make up an example. So let's pick a number between these ranges and 10 is my favorite number. Um, so carrying on over here. So let's say, let's assume that K equals 10. And based on that, we know that F will be equal to 10. We know that C will be equal to 21 minus 10 over 2, which will be equal to 21 minus 5, which is 16. 
and we know that b is equal to 26. So if k was equal to 10, french fries, or one possible solution would be french fries being 10 grams of fat, um, cheeseburgers being 16 grams of fat, and Big Macs being 26 grams of fat. So well, let's explain what that means. I'm running out of room, but hopefully you can see still. Um, so if we assumed that k was equal to 10, one possible solution would be 26 grams of fat or of fat of fat for the all right bm for the big mac um we had 16 grams of fat for the all right cb for cheeseburger just because i'm running out of room and 10 grams of fat for all right medium french fries to abbreviate that and that wraps up the final part of our answer so this here was the excellent stuff we we did the math on the previous stuff which we've erased we've got the generalizations we explained that or we explained what the generalizations mean that's the big max staying 26 the other two might change we've thought about well what values of k are applicable for our generalization not every number could work but in our case between 0 and 42 we then made up a possible solution i did 10 equals 10 because it's so k equals 10 because it's between that range and 10 is my favorite number i've got my three answers and then i explained that they were one possible solution so that wraps up the step-by-step -step video on our practice task. I hope, really do hope you found it useful. Uh, now let's get into heaps and heaps of practice before our real internal.